Blog Talk Radio.
you know, you and I basically just tell it, saying the same things. I mean, you could have been involved, but, I mean, the way it's set up now, I think Mary Jane and the way it's set up is pretty much, it looks like it's strictly not a debate, an open conversation, which is what I wanted in the first place, you know, an open conversation. We can't just say, oh, my God, the rest of the country is legalized, and we got to do that, too. Hell, we're smarter than the rest of the country. People, we should know we have to discuss these things before we just jump off the damn cliff and look for a place to land before we get down. Too many politicians do that. I'm not a politician. I have no excitement, no drive, no ambition to jump off a fucking freaking cliff and then look for a place to land. I've seen where we're landing. I know we can make the jump. The question is, do you know that we can actually make the jump? And that's what we're all here about. From my opinion, that's what Sunday is about. Do you know we can make this jump? Baby steps are for babies. Hey, you guys want to go around make baby steps and act like little five-year-olds? You go ahead. I'm going to be an adult, and I'm going to make the adult steps because we're adults in this state. And adults need to make the laws because baby steps really mess things up. I don't know anybody out there who can say, oh, that baby step was so worth it because it's so much better now. No, we're not making baby steps. Not in my camp. Not on my watch. You guys do whatever you want. I don't care if you want to follow me, if you agree with me, if you hate me, if you don't like me, if you love me, great. All of them acceptable but you can't ignore me as much as you want to these flapping lips won't shut up and they won't stop telling you the actual facts so sunday mary jane and the um, grannies for grass chapter here in michigan has put up together with fried eggs production this was supposed to happen at marijuana ranch something came up there couldn't go there Personally, myself, I would have liked to have seen a completely neutral um, venue so all manner of public could feel welcome. But it is what it is. And, you know, nothing wrong with fried eggs production or the, you know, down there or the systems going on. Just it's a little tougher area and a lot of, you know, non community people may not want to come down because of the toughness of the area. That said, I know there's going to be a lot of people there. I know they're probably expecting a sold-out show. The guys at Fried Egg and the venue over there in Montel, these guys run a great little setup. It's a nice little you know place down there. Good place to have a venue. Um, this should be a good place. You should be able to get a good amount of people in here and actually have the conversation before we jump off the cliff. And that's what we should have been doing all of last year. I admit that. When we started talking this year, we should have been doing this last year. But who among us thought that this year we'd be where we're at? Because last year we were told over and over and over and nightly and daily and thread after thread and post after post, the fountainheads are in Lansing making it better. Mm Hmm. Indeed they were. So, what Mary Jane's got here is a future of cannabis emission and exploratory conversation. This is not a debate. This is a conversation, a clarification of what our options will and may be on the ballot in 2016. Debate implies arguing, and grannies is about working as a team without egos and arguments over worldviews. I agree. There's enough stuff going on. We don't need to argue about what's happening. We all know what's happening. Talking about the mud that's stuck on the mud flaps does not get the tire out of the mud trail that is stuck in. We all know the problems. Everybody's got their special ones. Everybody's got their pet peeve problems. Everybody's got their benign issues that really don't bother them. But we all got them, and we all got them for the same reason. Prohibition of cannabis. So, She's right. We don't need to argue because there's really nothing to argue about. There's going to be no debate because all it's going to be is statements and follow-up statements finishing the sentences or vice versa. 
finishing the sentences and follow-up statements trying to say why that's just too far to go. So, I mean, there is no debate. So what we're going to have here is a conversation about why we need to repeal. The baby step of recreational cannabis, in my opinion, is a foolish man's goal. The issue is the government doesn't want to abide by your will. They've shown us that this government in this state, in this election cycle, have absolutely shown you you are a pest. You are a chattel. You are a piece of cattle for them to spend your money for you and tell you how you are to graze and who you are to breastfeed and how much milk you are to give. And don't act funny, Mr. Cattle. We got a prod for you, too. So, we're going to have this little discussion on Sunday. It starts at 12 noon. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long it's set to run, three, two, three, maybe four hours. This is a medicated area site. There is medication available or uh, medicating area available, as I understand. Um, with that being said, you know I'm there to have a conversation. If you guys want to talk about the joint at the end of your fingers, by all means, you don't need to come down there and waste my time. Because I'm not talking about the joint at the end of your fingers. I'm talking about the hemp field that's behind the forest that's being guarded by the government and the competition that don't want you to have any. You can't even look past your joint. How in the hell are you going to see that forest or that field that's behind that forest in the clearing? Because you're too busy staring at the smoke rolling off the end of the joint and the end of our fingers. So that's what this thing Mary Jane put together. And thank you, Mary Jane. I think it's a wonderful idea. You've been taking a bunch of crap from other people. I appreciate the effort. I love the effort. I was hoping we could get a bigger area where we could have more people, but this is a great start. We can do this in every place. I'd love to come back and just finish the sentences and you know complete the statements so everybody gets the full ear load and not just what they want, what these people on the other side of the, the group here want everybody else to hear. Oh, don't focus on that. We can only focus on recreational pot. Don't talk about the fact that cannabis kills cancer. We can't talk about the fact that two acres of hemp will give you 300 gallons of gasoline. No, we need to talk about putting our boys in Afghanistan to go protect the poppy fields for the pharmacology companies and the CIA's heroin drug running. And yes, the CIA runs heroin and drugs into this country and have been doing it since Vietnam. What the hell you think they were gutting our boys in Vietnam and packing their guts full of? It wasn't gauze. It was black tar heroin. And that's what the started out as some of the black op monies in Vietnam. So, let's not fool ourselves. Rec- recreational legalized pot is not legalization. More honestly, recreational legalized pot is the limiting of competition in the marijuana industry, strictly limiting it to government and their buddies. Act. That's what recreational legalized marijuana is. I don't care who's pushing it. If they say recreational legalized marijuana, they are talking limited, extremely regulated, highly taxed, government ran program there is no repeal of prohibition in that there is no lighter sentences is that there is just more tickets more fines and more inks on the dockets because it limits competition across the board not just for that doobie you're smoking at the end of your fingers but for everything the hempcrete the antibacterial clothing the cure for cancer. Oh, that's right. They don't tax medicine. But it gives you another 10% tax for those guys who want to get high because of that joint. Guess what else it taxes? Anybody and everybody in the state. You know why? Because they ain't going to make enough money to run their seed 
to jail, I'm sorry, seed to sale program because seed to sale includes audio and video recording captures mandated and recorded on state servers where you get to breach willingly and pay to breach your fourth and your customer's fifth amendment rights and openly admit criminal activity upon yourself on camera and on audio. Try to get that one struck out of the evidence file. How many people have been raided in dispensaries and how many of your customers have subsequently been raided? I think we all know people who have gotten raided at home who were only a customer the raid at that local dispensary that was just hit here last week, last month, last fall, last year. It's a follow-up story. Dispensary gets raided, followed up by a couple weeks later. People working at the dispensary or customers of the dispensary are being raided. So, yeah, that's what legalized recreational marijuana gives you. I don't get I don't care who's putting it forward, how they're doing it. Every one of them gives the state the authority, not you. They take it from you. They only really take it from you. They force you and trick you into thinking you're taking the authority for yourself when you're giving it to the state. Read them all. Read all those propositions. Read all those proposals. Read all those recreational marijuana acts. And you tell me which one says you won't go to jail. Not a one. That's which one. So, yeah, there's quite a bit here, you know. we got a lot of things to talk about. I hope this thing is a couple hours because we can't talk about recreational legalized dope without talking about the cure for cancer, the diabetes, the fibromyalgia, the MS, the lupus, the Crohn's, the autism, the Dervais syndrome, the nervous problems, the heart issues. We could spend four hours talking strictly, listing off the medical benefits of cannabis. Nobody has to say anything but the medical benefit of cannabis and move to the next one, and we'll spend four hours doing that. We won't even have to talk about what part of the cannabis plant helps that medical benefit. We just got, we'll just have to be listing the medical benefits. But no, we need to only focus on recreational pot and pot for potholes for 10%. So yeah, I'm being snide, I'm being rude, I'm being crude, because I find it absolutely hilarious. Sad, but hilarious. That some people will tell you, we're repealing prohibition with recreational legalized marijuana. Oh my God. And... Richard Nixon was a good president. Did I just say that? Oh, my goodness. If you believe recreational legalized pot is going to feel prohibition, you have to believe Richard Nixon was one of the greatest presidents this country has ever had, and that's all there is to it. You cannot have it both ways. So, Sunday, yeah, we're going to have a good discussion. I've got a lot of things to talk on. Dana's coming down, I believe. Dana's got a lot of things she wants to talk on. It's kind of up in the air whether she can make it. We're three hours between us, and I'm two and a half hours out of Detroit. But I believe she plans on being here and then riding with me down there. We've got um, one or two people coming. I'm trying to figure out how many people get to speak. I know originally we had six people that wanted to speak. Um... As I understand, they're down, limited down to three per side. Now, out of that, out of the six that want to speak, I know me and Dana want, are speaking, obviously. Um, we do actually have an official campaign committee for the ballot question, registered with the state or recognized by the state, accredited by the state, whatever you want to give it, stamped by the state stamp, boys and girls. Abrogate Prohibition Michigan is an official state-recognized ballot campaign committee, or ballot question committee. So, 
And you know, right now the committee is me and Dana. Um, there are a few other people who are working with us, but they're not part of the committee. Although we got room for a couple of people, we will add a few other people to the committee. But right now the committee's file is good to go. We can run it like this if we have to. We got some good, solid, like minds who would like to be part of the committee, step out of the limelight, so to speak. We'd love to have you. Of course, we got to make sure we're on the same page. But yes, there is a lot going on here. I know there's a lot of people, you know, we want to do this, we'd love to help this, we like, you know, everybody's looking for information. The only information I can give you is we're moving one step forward at a time, and we've made much hurdles this week. We passed hurdles last week, we passed hurdles this week, and next week we'll be coming up to and facing and passing our next hurdle, and then we'll be ready for the the major hurdle, which is the, you know, language itself. Um, so I'm willing to think by this First, second week of September, we'll be throwing the language hurdle, and we'll be seeing how that sticks to the wall. Um, I've got some, you know, background work to do on that to get everything organized, make sure um, the person eyeing it over has all the questions answered they need, make sure they've got the proper information they need, um, make sure they understand the intent of why I wrote things a specific way. So I'm sure they'll understand it. They're very qualified, legally, educationally, historically, uh, you know, learned. The person is very qualified to do what this needs to be done. More qualified than probably anybody in this state, including the top law dog, Mr. Bill Schutte from Yale himself. I'm positive the person has way more qualifications than Mr. Schutte. You know, a lot more understanding of the actual Constitution. So, language is being perused. It will be good to go. It should be ready to flow. So, Sunday, you know, Friday's production. We're going over here. You know, we're going to have this little get together and this, you know, discussion. There's a lot of things, Dustin. You know, sorry, guys. You think you're going to get a rise out of me? It's not going to happen. You can throw all the little innuendos. Screw in with the, you know, chew in with your little thing. You know, you can even claim your civ- civility or civilly discuss. Well, civility went out the window when you started banning people from your page, boys and girls. You cannot claim civility when you are even willing to answer simple questions, let alone ones that are very civil. Yeah, you can claim civility. Oh, they're just mean. They're asking hard questions and we can't answer them. They're uncivil. Yeah, we're going to have a riot on Sunday, boys and girls. I hope somebody's got it recording live. I might even try to broadcast live because this could be fun on any level. But we need to have this conversation, and this conversation will be had, and we'll be having this conversation until November 2016. The question is, when it comes to voting in November 2016, would you vote to legalize recreational marijuana if repeal's on the ballot right next to it? Because we won't be in competition as far as I can tell. There is no competition. There is even no contrast. Legalization of recreational marijuana is doing legislative initiates. We are doing a constitutional amendment. Completely different law. Completely different ballgame. They are making legalized recreational pot okay for a $100 fine and more jail time for people who can't pay the fines and, you know, want to actually help people instead of just take them to the bank for $28 a gram and think that that's going to help the roads and schools, you fools. The school fund is packed. They can't put any more in the rainy day school fund. They don't need money for the schools. They need to get out their keysters and actually use the money they have hidden and stashed in these funds. They don't need money for the roads. The road funds is loaded. They can't put money more in there. They've got emergency rainy day road funds 
with billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. You think your measly little 10% sales tax is going to make a difference to that? They're going to take that 10% sales tax and it's going to be sold on their little private piggy accounts, their little pet pet projects. <clears throat> and you're going to get a property tax bill increase because, well, damn, we didn't realize how many pot shops you all wanted to open. And we need to have monitoring and cops at every one of them. So we need more tax money to pay for all those people. I know they tell you it's going to be covered in the bill, but $350 million in taxes, ladies and gentlemen, that's at 30%, which is Colorado's. So we're only looking at $100 million maybe. $100 million in taxes ain't even going to cover the seed to tracking sale annual cost. Sorry, seed to jail annual cost. Because they're going to need an entire new section of government, of LARA, of the police association, just to monitor you recreational pie heads. Make sure you're not growing 13 plants instead of 12. Because golly, that's a $100 fine. Until you don't pay it, then it's jail time. So, yeah, you know, bring them up, boys. Let's talk pot for potholes. Let's talk about how silly the idea is and how much money the state has. Let's talk about pot for, you know, schools. Because Bill Shitty's going to run with that one. The potheads want to teach or kill children in the public schools. You know how that's going to be sold. Mmm, golly, the prohibitionists are going to suck that one down. You know what they're also going to suck down? Two acres of hemp could replace 100 barrels of crude oil or 300 gallons of gasoline. Because that's going to be part of the conversation. How two acres of hemp could bring our soldiers home and make our farms self-sustainable right here in the state. With no need from anybody outside of the state of Michigan. No federal government, no Colorado seed dealers, no Cali Kush dealers, no pimps from South America pushing their, you know, swacky Mexicali weed we used to smoke back in the day. No, this can all be done in Michigan by Michiganders. Guess who that employs? Recreational marijuana ain't going to bring that in. Oh, sure, it might put a couple minimum wage jobs at bud tender jobs. You might have a couple minimum wage people at the counter or at the testing facility. Oh, heck, you might even see a $12 an hour supervisor at the production facility. But these are going to be owned by people from out of state. Because you ain't got the money to open one up, do you? You got $400,000 for a production facility license? Oh, yeah, that's right, $5,000. But that's only to grow it. Right in the language, $5,000 to grow. Everything else is left up to the county. They can even prohibit it. Oh, but no county would prohibit it. Like, no county would come against the Medical Marijuana Act, and they wouldn't honor it. So Sunday, with any luck, we're going to be able to uh, have a good time. Actually get out and talk to some of these people. I know a lot of you people think this is utopia dreaming, but I remind you it was only you 80 years ago. That was just everyday life in this country called these United States of America. There, before there was income tax, oh yeah, there was a day not more than 75, maybe 80 years ago, where only 2% of this entire country actually paid income tax. Because only 2% of this entire country invested into the stock market and had capital gains. When you go to work for that 7.25 an hour, 
That's not capital gains income, people. That's compensation for trade for your time. And compensation is not taxable. And I know the lawyers are say, oh, that's crap, that's vulgar right here in our old compiled law under the tax code. Sorry, boys and girls. Compiled law is not constitution. And if the compiled law does not in line with the Constitution, it's just a compile of crap. It's a compile of dookie, a compilation of horse manure, because if the Michigan compiled law doesn't come in line with the Michigan Constitution or the Constitution of these United States of America, then it's just somebody's opinion, and that is not law. So before 1933 in the Social Security Act, nobody paid income tax on their labor because labor is compensation. You are being compensated in trade for your time, your body, your work, your sweat, your blood, your tears. That is not earned income. Oh, sure, you earn it by slaving your ass off. But by the actual tax code definition, that is not earned income. That is compensation. And the proof is in 1987, Lansing, D.C., not getting their fair share of taxes, changed the law in Michigan for unemployment. Because up until 86, 87, we had the Michigan Unemployment Compensation Agency. Not the Michigan Unemployment Guarantee Agency, which is just in a contracted insurance company now. And you pay taxes on insurance, which is why when you get uh, unemployment insurance check, you're paying taxes because you're getting an insurance payout. But before 1987, it was called the Unemployment Compensation Act of Michigan, and you were not taxed on unemployment compensation because compensation is not taxable earned income. Now stick that in your glass pipe and smoke it. Amazing what the change in one word does from compensation, administration, to insurance agency or assurance, sorry, not insurance, assurance. They're going to assure you will get your payment if you're laid off. Well, before, with you know, 1986, 87, it was a state-ran agency, which was ran by state taxes, your taxes, and you were paid compensation when you were laid off for being compensated for being laid off at 65%. So if you made $100 a week, you got a compensation of $65, and you did not pay taxes on it. Under today's assurance model, you get a compensation of $65, and you pay a 36 to 38% income tax level on that. So out of your 65%, you're down to 50 that you actually get to see and spend. And guess what? You still got to pay taxes on that at the end of the year again. <laughs> because they really screwed the pooch on you, this on us this time. So, yeah, unemployment insurance is not compensation. Unemployment insurance is taxable. Unemployment compensation was not. That's what Lansing, D.C. did. In 1987, when I was just fresh out of high school, Half of you people listening to this, either live or on, you know, archive podcast or on YouTube, would I get it up to YouTube, probably weren't even born in 1987. And if you were, none of you knew about unemployment, except those people that were 45 and older. Because those that are 45, well, I'm probably 47, because those people who are 47 years of old may have actually been able to get a job and be laid off where they actually collected unemployment compensation and didn't pay taxes on that 
compensation they collected from the Unemployment Compensation Agency of Michigan. So what does that have to do with Sunday? Taxes! Excise taxes on top of 6% sales tax. Because legalization of recreational pot in this state is asking for 10 or 30% excise taxes. That's on top of the 6% sales tax. Oh, don't worry, recreational people. You'll be put in the bill, but the medical people won't. Until they ditch the medical law and force you into the recreational law where there is no medical exception and you'll be taxed at, oh, we'll say 16%, but it's going to take that two years, which they'll raise it to 30% excise tax because under a legislative amendment, they only got two years before the government can take all control and pass anything they want out of Lansing, D.C., with a 51% majority. They don't need a 63% majority, maybe on a couple pieces, but most of it, simple majority of those who are voting. We've got 100 and some odd representatives. There's only 20 of them there, 11 vote yay. Oh, guess what? That 11 is a majority, and they made a change. That's legislative initiative. That's why we're not in competition with them. If you're going to do a legislative initiative, you may as well move to Ohio, because that's what they got no matter what they do. Ohio passes anything. Their legislation can rewrite it any way they want as long as the foundational intent is not changed. The proof of that is the Ohio decriminalization passage. Of course, they did limited legalization under the, you know, false term called decriminalization because they left fines, they left jails, all that stuff. They just said, government, step off it. But because the Ohio Constitution, sorry, oh Buckeyes, but your Constitution sucks hind tit. Your Constitution sucks, period. Their constitution is so bad, anything the people pass, their legislation can rewrite it as they see fit, as long as the original intent is the same, which the original intent was to decriminalize cannabis. Well, they did, but they've left all the crimes and all the fines and all the arrestable actions in place, because their legislation can do that. Michigan's can't, unless you give them a legislatively enacted law. Traditional legalized marijuana will be. That's why we're going for a constitutional amendment. They're really going to have to throw the dirt into the fan to come up against this one. The state will be forced to show their hands bloody, dirty, covered in money and filth in blood from our families, our loved ones, our dying family members, friends, co-workers, associates, neighbors. Because, well, you can't have a free-for-all. We can't have the government having just their normal amount of say now. That's utopian thinking, by golly. Can't have that. You might actually experience a little liberty and freedom again. I remember liberty and freedom. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago we actually had it. Oh, sure, the tyranny was coming. Lansing, D.C. was growing up like a good little pervert that it is. Uncle Chester the Molester, Jr. in Lansing, D.C., They were well on their way, but in the 70s and early 80s, you got in trouble, the cops just took you home. You had dope, they just threw it out. Hell, half the time the cops take it from you and they probably smoked it when they got off the job. But you weren't arrested. Hell, half the time they didn't even tell your parents, don't let me catch you again, son, next week. Oh, we can't have Don't let me catch you again, son. But then we got into the 80s. 
head of the CIA, who was made vice president. The rhino, he called himself a Republican, but he was a rhino, Republican in name only. The liberal Democrat, Ronald Reagan, governor of Colorado, who's still a you know, Republican in Colorado, rhino in Colorado, became the president. And then three months later, he was shot and almost died, and we almost got the vice president, head of the CIA, as president, which we got in 1998 after Ronnie's eight years. But, oh, what happened in the 80s? Just say no and Nancy Reagan. While the CIA invaded Afghanistan to run the Ruskies out of Afghanistan with their CIA asset, Tim Osmoon, a.k.a. Osama bin Laden, because the Russians are burning down the opium fields, and the CIA's blackout money was going bye bye. Oh, Tim, you're just a crazy conspiracy theorist. Except I'll put it out in congressional reports. Thank you, Iran Contra. And Ali North, drug runner of the Pentagon, and CIA asset. Look up Barry Seal. Look up Mina, Arkansas. Look up Jeb Bush in the Miami Naval Base. Look up the CIA black ops trafficking that Barry Seal was running the money into. Why was Barry Seal flying out to Area 51? Oh, that's right. He had somewhere to drop off the money. Area 51 is where he dropped off all the money that they got from running heroin into this country and weapons down to those Sandinistas, those freedom fighters, that group of Mujahideen, who Ronald Reagan said were just like our founding fathers. The Mujahideen, a.k.a. the Muslim Brotherhood, fought with Adolf Hitler in the North Africa campaign. <laughs> Do your history, boys and girls. Try that one on for size. So yeah, taxes, government control over your thoughts, your mind, your body, your choices. You're free for all. No, we can't have a free for all. We got to give it to government. Because golly, only government can tell us how to live our lives. You're just too stupid to do it yourself, ladies and gentlemen. So Lansing, D.C. has got to do it for you. With their seed to sale tracking, ready for legalized recreational marijuana. Now I know I'm talking the word, I'm using the word repeal, which we're doing. We are actually repealing. I know I'm using the word deschedule, which is kind of a funky word, not anywhere, but we are actually descheduling. We are removing cannabis from the Michigan Controlled Substances Act. Prohibiting it, prohibiting it. We are going to prohibition, prohibition. Because it will never be added on the Michigan Control of Substances list or any list in this state, as long as this state's a sovereign state of the country of these United States of America. Because we're forbidding it to go on a list. Only needs your vote. Oh, but they won't allow that. Oh, they is the voter. So the voter won't allow themselves to have freedom of choice, freedom from unjust taxation. So they, the elector, the voter, you won't let yourself repeal cannabis prohibition. Because that is what you're saying when you say, they won't let us do it. Well, you are they. Now, there is a they, but they are not the electors. They are the servants we call government, and I call little D.C., the little 
Uncle Chester the Molester Jr. Because it don't matter what part of the political coin you're on. The blue D side or the red R side. Ten years ago was the blue R side and the red D side. Don't believe me, go look. The colors changed. The bullshit stayed the same. That's the political coin. It's called politics. And what are politics? Poly, meaning many, and we all know what a tick is, a blood-sucking insect that causes disease and death. Politics is many blood-sucking leeches, and they do their thing in Lansing, D.C. And they don't want you to have any control over you. That's their domain. They're the government. You're the sheeple. Except that little constitution thing that wouldn't even be there if you did not give your power to the constitution. And if you don't give your power to the constitution, well, that's why they're beating you over the head without it. <laughs> because you ain't given it to do just the cause it needs. You, We need to support the constitution. That constitution is our duty. We've been lax in allowing the state to do it because the fountainheads have said the state's got that for you. Go enjoy your ball game. Go enjoy that high school kids pageant. That high school football game that's going on tonight. You go watch high school football. You go watch Joe Lewis in the new Red Wing Stadium that you paid your taxes for, you go enjoy yourself, Johnny Q Public, because Lansing, D.C., little Chester the Molester Jr. has got your back covered. How's that been working out for you? Of course we need to support our kids and their choices in the sports they play. But damn, when you know more about the opposite team's quarterback than you do about your own damn senator, you're a Fool! You ain't smart enough to vote, and you probably weren't smart enough to have kids. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. People, you need to give as much attention to your people in government as you do to your children and your children's teachers. Because our children's teachers aren't doing very damn good either. That's why they want to tax you 10% or 30% for pot for potholes and pot for schools. Because the state ain't doing it. And you want to give them more money to do less with. (laughs) Or more with, as the case may be. You want to give them more money to make a bigger club to beat you over the club the head with with that club harder. That's what legalization of recreational pot does. In any state in this country. Oh, Colorado, yeah, they're making money hand over fist. Oh, my God. Yeah, Colorado was doing pretty good. Colorado really didn't have a major economical issue. Oh, they made so much money, they're going to give some back. Yeah, a whole $7 if you file taxes and if you get a Colorado state tax return. What was I saying earlier about income taxes? In compensation, <laughs> they're going to give you a whopping seven bucks if you are in Colorado and you get your big state overdrawn of you know, legalized recreational marijuana market. Meanwhile, patients are going without having to pay twenty five, thirty five dollars a gram. And that's when they buy it in a quarter amount. Ain't no break on a gram, all the way up to a half ounce from some what some people say. Now some places are selling you know half ounces for hundred bucks, but it's not medical quality. So yeah, this is you know you want to see what the recreational legalized cannabis is going to look like. Take a deep look at Colorado. Stephen Lowell's been telling you all what's going on in Colorado. He's been out there. He's been telling you what's going on in Washington. I know he made a trip out there, too. They're eviscerating, killing, doing away with their medical laws. 
where there's no taxes out there either, enforcing those people into the recreational tax market. Oh, so they've got a 7% sales tax plus 30% excise tax, so they're paying 37% taxes for that legal recreational dope. dope. That joint at the end of their fingers. Man, that $30 a gram dope must be just killer. I wish I could go out to Colorado and spend $3 a gram. Oh, that's right. I don't have to. I just got to wait for it to come here to Michigan. We've been out for an hour. Ain't got no callers. That's great. I'll run my lips and slap them all night long by myself to myself because there's at least 80 to 100 people listening in into the uh, archives pretty much every episode. There's been 15 to 20 live listeners. I would love for you guys to call in and push that number one. Come on in. Let's have a conversation. You can stay anonymous. I don't get any names. I just get a number. You don't have to tell me your name. I don't want to know it if you don't want to tell me it. But give us a call. What do you think? Am I off my rocker? Is some of this making sense? Some of it new to you? Old to you? Have you ever heard it before? Not at all? 646-668-2239. Pushing number one gets you into the switchboard where I'll bring you on the air. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to play a little 6 minute and 30 second song. Actually, 6 minute and 15 second song called The Gavel. Now, before we start this, I had to re-upload all the music, so I'm restarting with all the music, so it's much similar to the same as what we had before, a couple different ones here. Over the next couple days, I'm going to be adding more. By next week, I hope to have an upgraded internet service, better than the crap I got more now, and I'll be able to do a lot better because I'll have better service. So, the gavel. I'll see you in a few.
supposed to be visiting patients. But, you know, our Supreme Court and our Court of Appeals, who don't want you to have any free-for-all, have any freedom at all. So remember that. That's another way to look at this, people. When you hear your government servants, those employees that we hired, of which we are the bosses, tell you you cannot have a free-for-all, what they are saying is you cannot have any freedom at all. So, sorry, I'm eating a cold grape and it's good. I'm enjoying it. So, you know, we got this set up. You know, we need to come to conclusions. You know, I'm already there. I've been there for a long time. Like Dana was saying last night, you know, she's ready to pitchfork up and storm the, you know, the moat and go to the gates and let's go get the king and you'll make this right. I've been that my whole life. Me too. But we've never been in such a position in my lifetime, 49 years of it, not much. Some of you have got a few years on me. Some of you go, 49, man, he's an old man. Some of you go, 49, holy shit, I thought he was 70. (laughs) Perception, perception, and I'll say it again, perception. For those of you that thought I was in my 60s and 70s, you need to pay attention to your perception because it's off. And that is how the pedophiles and perverts called Uncle Chester the Molester in little dancing D.C. get away with what they're getting away with because they are working in your blind spot that we call, do you want some freedom at all? Or do you need some more little Lansing, D.C., little Chester the Molester Jr., I'm sorry, Uncle Chester the Molester Jr., that Michigan flavor wig, and we got to let government tell us how to live, guy and girl, who usually works for the government in some way, shape, or form, or makes their money off the government in some way, shape, or form, or bilks taxpayers with the help of the government in one way, share, one way, shape, or form. Yeah, those are the people we need to follow because they've done so well since, over my lifetime. And, yeah, you young guys who are up there, you know, in your little fountainhead spraying your little, you know, gifts of loveliness all over the place, you are saying the same things the fountainhead said last year, last decade, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah, I know, decade and 10 years, same thing. 50 years ago, you fountainheads today spray the same sputum that was being sprayed in 1937. Oh, sure, it's still got a little different smell to it. It's not quite as putrid as it was, but it still ends up in the same shithole. Government control over you, and you ain't got no damn free for all. And you ain't got no freedom at all, do ya? All right, you're free right up until you're caught, and then you got to prove you're innocent. Mm, ink dockets get inky, and you know they don't like using that invisible ink. And they especially don't like that erasable ink. So I'm saying, too damn bad. (laughs) That's not for you to decide. That's why we, the people, have the political power. It's inherent in us. If there is no us, there is no us to give a little bit of each of our powers to the thing we call the Constitution of the state. We don't even need to go federally. We're talking of the state of Michigan. Every one of you in the state of Michigan who are 18 years or older, and every one of you who are 18 years or younger, because they owe 
a share just like your mom and dad do. So if you're under 18 and you're listening to this, and your mom and dad talking about legalized recreational pot, go slap them upside the face and say, what the hell are you thinking binding me underneath this crap for the rest of my lifetime? Are you stoned? Yeah, I probably would have done something like that at that age, 10, 15 years old. Yeah, I'd have slapped somebody upside the pussy. What the hell are you thinking? Because that is the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever we throw on the books in 2016, I got 5, 10, maybe 20 years, hell, If I've been really bad and really deserve punishment, I might have another 50 years in me. (laughs) The worse you are, the longer you're going to live. How's that for a thought? Only the good die young, right? Anyway, sorry, I mean, you're you're frozen great. Mmm. Cold and juicy and so sweet. So, anything we put on 2016, I don't care if it's a 1% sales tax increase. Or recreational legalized pot. Or abrogate, repeal, and get done with this part of the drug war nonsense. Because we still got meth, heroin, Prescription ODs one every 19 minutes, alcoholism, psychological issues, depression, bipolar, suicide by prescription pill, if not suicide by cop, if not just suicide by depression, 90% of which comes out of the many other drugs, most of which come with a doctor's prescription pad. If you want to talk baby step, we are taking a baby step, if you got to hear it that way. The baby step is we're getting cannabis out of their damn hair so they can deal with the real problem. How's that for a baby step? You want to give them all the control and then make people put a message on themselves and it may cause you harm? Where's that message on the potatoes, boys and girls? Eat a raw potato. It may cause you harm, too. Eat eight to ten of them, you are definitely going to have some harm. Drink two gallons of water. Where's the label on the water? Don't drink two gallons of this in one day because you're probably going to drown. You're going to drown if you drink two gallons of water if you don't do nothing else or get rid of it, you know. And yes, you can drown by drinking too much water in one 24-hour period. Hell, there people have been drowned from swimming all day, and they absorbed too much water. And they drowned in their own beds at night. Why, Mom and Dad thought they were sleeping comfy. And you want to make them put a label on this product may cause a... Where's the label on the tub? This tub may cause a slip and fall, and you're going to break your neck. Where's the label on the government? This government may pull out a gun at the behest of its policy and put a bullet in your head. Where's the label on the GMO food? Or the GMO dope? Now, you want to label something when George Soros with his company GW Pharmaceuticals, who owns patents on a lot of strains of cannabis, which are going to be sold in the recreational legalized market because they won't be buying your dope. They won't have a contract. Well, you don't have a contract with Monsanto. Your dope won't be getting bought or sold. So you tell me how that's going to fit in your pipe and smoke down the road. And you want to give all of this loveliness, bind it up in a little pill called Happy Joy Joy, Joy 
get that in my hands, legalization of recreational pot, and bind your children and grandchildren to it? Do I really need to say more than that? Apparently I do. Michigan's going to be one of the few states that's going to get two cuts of this apple. We got our first cut with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act in 2008. And we didn't take a baby step. We didn't say, oh, let's just do it for the those who are terminal cancer and dying, and those are the only people that are going to help because they're the worst and they really need the relief. And they're absolutely right. They are some of the worst off, and they really need it. But they're not the only worst off. They're not the only ones that need relief. There are thousands of conditions that get relief. That's why we added as many as they thought feasibly, feasibly doable at the time, and some of the most worst, because, yes, it was a good selling point. Let's face it. Getting you to sign a ballot petition is a job of a salesman especially when you don't know what you're actually buying. You read the fine print of that contract when you bought that car, but you won't read the fine print of a ballot initiative that you're going to bind your children and grandchildren to live under. Mm, damn, these are good grapes, especially when they're frozen. You never froze your grapes and ate them, man. You're missing out. So, yeah, we got this uh, big issue coming up. They want to keep it a little issue by talking about get the recreational marijuana. But you know, that's all you're old enough to handle. You go over there, little boy and little girl. You, you you take your recreational marijuana. You'll be a good little kid. And you sat in the corner, and we won't bother you too much. Now, don't, don't, don't act up. Lansing, D.C. don't like it when you get lippy. Don't talk back, young lady. The government's talking to you. We took our babies up in 2008. We get the second slice. In 2016. Just look around this country, ladies and gentlemen. Watch how fast that fire is rolling. You're going to either get burned or you're going to use that fire to your advantage. I got a, There's a lot of crap around here that would be nice to burn out of our way. I say we use the fire. We'll put the fires up, walls up where they need to be. But let that fire burn out the crap. Let it do what it's got to do. Because what happens after a place stops burning? Burn a forest down. And go look at it three months later. A brand new life everywhere. It's flourishing like it never did before. Something new, something better, something doable, something better for all. Not just the tallest trees in the park. The one with their biggest hands up high. Saying, look at me, I'm the tall tree. And I'm taking all the life out of everything that's underneath me. Yeah, this fighter could be good. A fighter rolling through the nation called the marijuana change. Well, it's only good if you know it's coming. Otherwise, it burns you out and burns you over and may burn you up. We know this fighter's coming. Hell, we were in the part of the initial firewall. And we built a good firewall state didn't like that firewall. It protected too much of 
list of stuff that needed to be burned out, according to them, and burn out all the stuff they wanted to protect. But according to us, it was a good firewall, and it did exactly what it needed to do. So, there's another fire coming now. And this will be the last fire of this kind. Over 80 years, maybe. Probably ever again, because if this fire goes through and we all get burnt, there ain't going to be any more fires. You're going to get your little pharmaceutical prescribed pot pill (coughs) made by Monsanto and Eli Lilly and Merck. All the chemicals are supplied by Dow. Who is this related to Dow in this state again? Gosh, it's slipping my mind. And Standard Oil and Afghanistan and all these other places that are pulling oil out of the city. Because we're exporting our oil in this country. We are the world's top exporter in crude oil. (laughs) Yes. Or refined gasoline, I'm sorry. We are the world's top exporter in refined gasoline. That's gasoline you put in your tank every day. And ask yourself, why are we paying even two fifty a gallon if we're exporting so much for the rest of the world? Got to have those bobbles, as Dana would say. So we get a second slice of this apple, cannabis apple. The question is, This time, the first time we got a slice, we took it. State didn't give it to us. The Democratic government didn't give it to us. The federal government, Democratic or Republican, didn't give it to us. We stepped up like big boys and girls, pulled up our britches, and we took our apple slice. It's called the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. Oh, but the government didn't like it, and it's had it throwing its tantrum. It was my slice of apple, darn it, man. They took my slice of apple. Yeah. It wasn't your slice. It was our apple. It wasn't even mom's apple. It was our apple. You stole the whole damn apple. And you're bitching about us taking a slice back? Well, you should have accepted what you got, because now we've taken our whole damn apple back. How do you like us now? So, the second slice of apple. Do you want it pre-chewed and spit up in, you know, applesauce by the government? Or would you just rather cut your own slice of apple? Because that's really what it's about here. I mean, that is literally what we were talking about in 2016. You can let the government chew that apple up and let all the fountainheads out there say, oh, we need to make this baby step and pre-chew this apple because we know it's so hard for you to chew your own apple. We'll give you this little slice of the slice of the apple that you took back that was your apple to begin with. And you go sit in the corner like a good little boy and girl and you enjoy that little slice. And as long as you don't make too much noise about the fact that we're eating the rest of your apple and you're never going to get any more of it again, and in fact we're even selling it and making money off it, and we're going to use that money to build the cell to put you in for taking your slice of apple back, Or you can take the damn apple back, slap the damn little brat in the face, put his ass in the corner where he belongs, and be a damn adult. Because this is the topic. This is the fundamental thing, and it goes deep. There's unemployment to talk about. There's dying farms and revitalized farms to talk about. There's middle class decimated, continuing to stay decimated, Or if we repeal it, you can be the next middle class 
with your little five acres of whatever you want to do. Because as long as you're not harming anybody, you have committed no crime. You won't get a $1 fine. Because we have made it constitutionally illegal and unconstitutional for them to fine you if you grow your cannabis. You may have to fight the federal government. But we are making language that says the state has to honor the act with the full faith and integrity and honor of the Constitution itself, which means the state has to protect the act. And the state will be forced to protect those who are using the act regardless of where that force is coming from in opposition. When we repeal, and I mean really repeal, not this hogwash, repeal of medical marijuana for medical marijuana or uh, recreational marijuana, you guys ain't repealing nothing. The only thing you're doing is stealing a name, a word called repeal, and trying to make people think you're repealing because I've been running my mouth, Steve has been running his mouth, Dana's been running his mouth, Penny's been running her mouth, half the state's been running their mouth. We just happen to be some of the few that are most vocal. There's a few others out there. I'm sorry if I didn't get you, Grannies, you know, Mary Jane, Jimmy. We just happen to be the ones being the most vocal. I guarantee you where there's one in the bush, or one in the hand, there's three in the bush, boys and girls. And in this state, it's a big bush, and I guarantee you there's more than three. So, do we give government what they cannot give themselves or take for themselves, control of recreational marijuana or you say well Lansing D.C. you've done such a horrendous job up until now with everything else I think we're going to go this one alone there ain't going to be another baby step ladies and gentlemen that's a bunch of crap. Oh, two or three years, we'll go for a little bit more. Yeah, by two or three years, the federal government's going to have stepped in and taken over, and people are going to say, oh, the federal government told us what to do. we got to do it. No. This is a state's right issue. The federal government is mute. Treat them like they are mute because they are mute. They have no say, and their position is moot, meaning it is pointless. Yes, I use those words perfectly fine. They are mute. They are mute. They cannot speak on this issue. It is not theirs to speak to. They are mute. They say nothing. Therefore, their position is pointless, i.e., a.k.a. moot. This is a state's issue. And in this state, called the state of Michigan, Division 1, Section 1 of the Constitution, the very first thing is all political power is inherent in who? We the people. Who? We the people. Who? 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 We the people. (laughs) Not government. Not government agents. Not the governor or governorette. We the people are the inherent political power. You, me, we are the they. The government are the servants. This is where we need to remember. They're just an employee. As the employee, they don't get to tell you, the owner, how you're going to do your business. Oh, they can make suggestions all day long. 
They can have opinions about anything they want to. But the charter of this business says, we the people are the inherent political power. And our charter absolutely says, we can do anything legislature can do, and this is absolutely something legislature can do, but they will not because they cannot allow a freedom at all for you. So yeah, 2016, let's just give the government everything, bend over, let's drop our drawers, throw a little sand in the crack, pull them apart, please, Your Honor, just don't stick it in too hard and far, and pass recreational legalized marijuana. Or you can stand up and bitch slap that little punk like the punk he is, put him in his place. Like he should have been put in his place by our parents who didn't know better because they believed the lies just like many of us did and some of us still do. You either do or you get done. And trust me, when it comes to this Lansing, D.C., this government, in this time in my lifetime... Oh, are you going to get done? Notice I said you. I'm not going to get done. Oh, they're going to try to do me. But I got nothing better to do. And I got nothing to lose. So what are they going to take from me? I'm not a target because I don't got an asset forfeiture. I'm not a target because I ain't got a retirement check. A savings account. $400,000 mortgage. $45,000 car loan. The only thing I got is my free-for-all that they can take for me. Unless they really want to get crude and actually go to try to harm my family. Fair warning. Go, go. Don't, don't, do not. You will not like me. You think I'm an asshole now. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for so, they can pull me over, take me to jail. Oh, boy. I got a constitution. I got a Bible. I got a Webster, yeah, Winston Simplified Dictionary. And nothing but time till I go home. So what, you going to come arrest me for speaking out? Because that's what the government's going to have to do. Because I'm moving forward, man. This has got to end. This cannot go on. I cannot leave this to my child and your child to suffer under. We can't leave our children in more shackles than what we got here and we're under. We are supposed to remove the shackles from our children, not add tonnage to them. 2008, we took a step to remove the shackles. And in 2016, we can cast them off. Or we can put them back on twice and make sure our children never get out of them again. So what you can say, 
What do you want to do? Hey, baby boomers, what would you have done? 1975, if they actually repealed marijuana or gave you the option to it or just gave you the option of legalizing it recreation, which you would have done. Now, I'll admit it, up until I was 25, 30 years old, I thought legalization of recreational marijuana would work. Of course, you know, I was thinking... A little broader than an ounce or two. But in the mind, my mindset, I'm thinking exactly the same thing I'm thinking today. There's only one real way you can actually really ever truly say this is legal pot. This if it's absolutely not illegal in any way, shape, or form or even call for a drug counselor one-hour meeting. No fines, no fees, no nothing. That's legalization. Anything else is competition control. And the government is who you'll be in competition with, a.k.a. Monsanto, because the Monsanto Protection Act protects Monsanto, but... Monsanto uses government to not protect you. Because Monsanto's growing everything. You don't they already just patented their weed. They are George Soros probably owns over fifty percent of GW pharmaceuticals and hidden shell firms, which means so Monsanto basically owns GW pharmaceuticals where all the pharmacology dope sprays and pills are coming from because golly they just know how to do it better oh and they pay government millions in backroom deals that kind of helps yes cannabis can save the planet high times I know your article is still 2013, two years old. But damn, you guys are foolish. Yellow journalists now. You used to be a damn magazine in the 70s and 80s. A guy could, and woman could pick up and actually find respectable damn articles on. Back when it was National Organization... For repeal of marijuana laws. Oh, yes. National Organization for the Repeal of Marijuana Laws. That's what normal used to be. Until sometime in the late 80s, early 90s, they got all sorts of anonymous donation money to the tune of millions and oh the policy change to the national organization of reformed marijuana laws aka recreational legalized dope then the old excuse well it's just too hard to beg government for free for all So we're going to ask them to put in the shaft just a little bit and hope they don't slip and shove it all the way in. A lot of that's from Richard Pryor, if you don't understand what I'm pulling that out of people. Richard Pryor had a skit that was hilarious where he was talking about being in front of the judge. He said, just don't shove it in too far, Your Honor. You had to be there. Just go find the old Richard Pryor albums and play them, man, because it was some funny-ass shit, and he was like George Carlin right on the money. So, yeah, we need some more government to tell us how to do this because we're just too stupid to do it, too stupid to read, you know, read plain English. 
We are too stupid to understand common law. We are too dumb to do and have a green thumb. Got to be a corporate job. Man, they've been making people kill pigs in this county or in this state under the feral pig laws, which are of not laws, excuse me, the feral pig misguided opinions and probably caused three or four farms, if not to go under extreme financial stress. Because of an opinion by a slave in the government called an attorney general. And yes, Mr. Shooty, public servant means slave to the public. Ron White. Because I was tossed in the public. If you get a paycheck from the taxpayers, you're our bitch. You can bitch all you want. You don't like it? Resign. Go try your hand back in Washington. Where they laughed at you. (laughs) Oh my God, did they laugh. It was embarrassing, people. To think we put this guy into Washington, and oh my God, <laughs> it was wonderful. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at the history and watch. It's just puppy with his tails between his legs come limping back home. <laughs> Politics are a bitch, aren't they, Billy Bong? Mm-hmm. Send your boys at me with your opinions. I got my Bible too, Bill. Mine didn't come from Yale. Or any of my brothers under the skin. So yeah. Sunday's going to be fun, man. I can't wait. Because, you know, the truth is, Whatever anybody from the legalization says is absolutely, well, almost right. The problem is, their problem's going to be, they can only talk to one thing. No, two things. Government control and baby steps. Because, well, it's just the thing everybody else is doing and it's the right now thing, so it's all we can do. They won't like that. That's what we're going to be hearing. We have to make this little step into bigger tyranny because, well, we don't know what else to do. And basically what they're going to be telling you. We don't got a clue. We threw this all together at the last minute. Hell, we weren't even sure what the heck was going on when we were starting to collect money, all three of them. They all got their plans. They all got their options. They all got their... Outlooks. They all got their quandaries. Oh, we don't do just right now porridge. Too hot porridge is going to take it all away. Going to burn you. And if just right now porridge doesn't do it, well, too cold porridge might actually get it, and, you know, you can only do so much with two, two cold porridges. So if you don't vote for the right now porridge, well, we're going to lose it all. Well, baby, you've already lost it. You've allowed them to open the act. You fountainheads who have been down there in the closed-door meetings have not stuck your foot up anybody's ass. Somebody bring KY with them? <laughs> the 400% increase in arrest on this side of the fence. Y'all been kind of quiet. 
Oh, you've been loud and floating, flapping your lips and fountain heads. Us? Oh, we can't. No, no protest. Ooh, they won't like that. Oh, we're making a deal. It's going to make our deal harder. You're going to blow it for us. But too goddamn bad, boys and girls. You've been screwing the pooch for six years. Most of the people in this state have been waiting for you to step up like a boys. Get off your little toddles and act like men. I don't think most of you got out of frippin' teenage grade school. You're supposed to be adults. You have kids. But man, what a bunch of emasculated pussies. Damn, our founding fathers are rolling over in their grades. Pissing on the shit that's become of the people who say they're the lead speakers. You son of a bitches wouldn't talk out if your dicks were on fire. As long as government said it was okay, you might. Yeah, you can call me crazy of flapping lips, but it's all true and you know it. I've watched you guys tuck your tail and run when patients get in your face. Because they feel like they're being shit on. Oh, no, that's not my problem. I didn't do that. Oh, yeah, go talk to them over there. They did it. Tuck your tail and run back to the porch like the puppy pissers you are. If all you guys are going to do is run around second base and piss on each other, just get the hell off the field and let the boys do the job. Get the boys out of there. You boys ain't doing shit. You haven't been doing shit. Pissing on the porch with the puppies, thinking you're out hunting rabbits. Put your puppy ass on the porch and let the men do what they got to do. Hell, there's women in this state that have bigger balls than you men. For fuck's sake. Ten years ago, my mom would have been kicking your asses. And she's a hell of a great woman. But if you pissed her off and you crossed her, <laughs> you wouldn't have liked that little German. Because she'd tell you exactly how it's going to be. And you would be, yes, ma'am. Out of all five foot of her, 110 pounds, you would have been following her. Yes, ma'am. And that's not a fear, that's a respect. But she's 80 years old now. She ain't quite as feisty as she used to be. And all I can say to the rest of you people out there is, you know, want to do this? You're lucky my sisters died. Because they're they're bigger hellions than my mother was when it comes to people doing people wrong. My sister Debbie drove her Jeep, brand new Jeep, stuck in third gear from South Carolina to Lee Iacocca's doorstep. And when I mean doorstep, she parked her Jeep three feet from the door in the main entrance of Chrysler, and she did not stop until she was in his office in the middle of a board meeting up one side of him and down the other. Because when she and my mother went down to Georgia to visit my other sister with her brand new Jeep, that Son of a bitch stuck in third gear. Now you look at this, people, and you think I'm shitting you. You listen. My little sister, my older sister, but she's littler than I am, five foot three. And my mother, five foot tall, both of them 110 and 140 pounds max. 150 pounds, my sister was a pretty stocky gal. She wasn't fat. She wasn't big. She was pretty stocky. Drove a brand new Jeep CJ5, or 7 at the time, from South Carolina through the mountains of Kentucky, up and down the hills around the mountain passes, through the Ohio Valley, stuck in third gear the entire way, and drove right up to Lee Iacocca's office. She didn't wait for security. 
She didn't wait for the secretary. She didn't even wait for the door to open. Because when she opened that door, all eyes were who in the hell is coming in here with that mouth. You guys are lucky those two women are not here. Having survived cancer, if they would have, and then they would have, had we known for sure, and the government not hid the damn truth from us that THC cures cancer cells, kills cancer, ptosis, look it up. They would have been here. <laughs> you guys, you think I'm a, tre- a deer? Oh, you have no cherry cheesecake left for that one, young man and women, let me tell you. You're getting the early and easy treatment with me. Trust me. I watched it. <laughs> you didn't, we wouldn't want to go to what some people went through with my, oh yeah, trust me, no. Government? Probably the smartest thing you ever did, but also the dumbest. Because now you just pissed me off. But I'm not pissed anymore. That anger's long gone. Gone since 2005, 2006 when my second sister died. It just took me a little while to get over that one. Even after, especially after 13 days later, my brother died. Unexpectedly. So yeah, my anger's been there. Oh, way high. And it's long beyond. What you are listening to is a man of resolve. A man of conscience. And a man of soul. Say what you will. Call me what you got to. I've been married. I've heard it all before. My ex-wife will tell you. (laughs) She called me it all before. This conversation, it's a full one, it's a deep one, and you won't be able to shut me up, throw me in jail. Have your buddies in government Come grab me and throw me in a lab coat and say, oh, he's crazy, because they do that. They've done that to a lot of people to get them to shut up when they ain't got nothing else to take. Try to get them committed and declared mentally insane. Bring it on, man. This ought to be a good ride, because I've got nothing but time. Miss Jack Ann Radio signing out.